Hello, this is James, it's Future Multilingual. We're talking today about why some people don't understand us. Yeah, we're speaking a language, we're languaging. Let's start using that verb, that, that word is a verb, to language, okay? We're languaging and some people don't understand us. Now, your automatic response is, well, you know, it's my fault. I'm not speaking clearly enough. What well, all these words that people use, intelligible. I'm not intelligible. My pronunciation isn't standard. Yeah? I'm not speaking clearly enough. Yeah? But is it? Right, I think everyone who's ever learned a second language or ever spoken to a baby recognises that sometimes the listener brings an inability to understand. Two examples, okay? Every, when, I, when I first arrived in Colombia, I used to sometimes go and get breakfast, yeah, from the shop. Didn't have any eggs, didn't have any tamales, didn't have anything in for breakfast. So I go down to the shop to get breakfast, right? And the woman, she would be sat in the shop. You know, it was a small shop where they sold the eggs or tamales, and she would shout up to her husband something like, oh God, it's that idiot I can't understand the game. She couldn't understand me. And her husband would come down, and I would say to him, uh, yeah, dame dos tamales, yeah? Give me two tamales, yeah? Please, obviously I'd say, please, obs. Yeah, and he would give me well, he gave me two tamales. He understood what I was saying. So what was going on? Why didn't this woman understand me? And why did her husband easily understand me? Is it because there is something inherent in the way I speak known as intelligibility or clarity? No, obviously. Because if one person understands me and another doesn't, then it's nothing inherent if in the way I speak. And we see this all the time, no? The listener brings something to the table. When a baby speaks to you at first, it can be difficult to understand them. Yeah, they'll say this one, but they'll say it in a way and you're like, no, I don't know. I'm going through the YouTube videos and they're screaming at me and they're kind of frustrated. I, I, and it seems I'm not getting the right one, but what are they saying? And then, click, Eureka moment, they're saying this one. Have they suddenly changed how they say it completely? Are they making small adjustments, subconsciously, at an implicit level? No, no, something just clicks in you, the listener. So the listeners bring a lot to it. And I was reading Dr. Ramjatan in, his, uh, his chapter in the book, Thinking with an Accent, and he said this. He was talking about, I'll tell you what he said. I won't tell you what he was talking about, I'll tell you what he said. It is also about an accent drawing attention to character traits stereotypically tied to a person's social identity. Depending on how one sounds, one might be stereotyped as sexually attractive. Yeah, can be, your accent or unappealing, intelligent or unintelligent, trustworthy or suspicious, and so on. Oh, our sexual attractiveness, intelligence, trustworthy and suspicious, are they part of the accent? Are they part of the way they speak? No, the listener brings that. The listener brings biases to the experience. So the listener can also bring the bias of unintelligible. Yeah. Some people, like the woman in the shop, like me listening to the baby, brings the bias to the table, brings the stereotype of this type of person is unintelligible. Now you can do as many beautiful British English courses with Lucy as you want. People are still going to bring those biases. And they're not innately, it's how you look, how you appear to them, their prejudices. They bring all of these things to the table.
because we use I we know the way we process accents phonetically is an implicit mental representation that we have in our head of the phonetics, of phonetics, which is generally based on our first language. So we might, you know, di if it's different phonetically, we might find it difficult, but we also bring other implicit knowledge to it. And that is implicit knowledge in the form of biases. So all of this stuff where people say, oh, generally people in X country don't like Y way of speaking, yeah, they're bringing a bias to the table. And generally, because Matt versus Japan, he gave a list of countries where people from the USA apparently, he wasn't being racist, he was just saying that people from the USA only like the way white European people speak. What's wrong with that? Yeah, but... And he was, yeah, he pointed out, it's similar to them. No, it's not because there's something inherent in their voice. It's because your biases are preferring people who are similar to you. Do we get it? Are we there yet? That's James, future multilingual. Comment underneath. Clickety-click the like. Just subscribe to the channel. And off we go.